Scatter plots draw the locations of xy positions based on two numeric variables. In general, you're trying to learn information about the association between the two variables. A positive association is present when both variables tend to increase together. As one variable goes up, the other tends to also go up. A negative association is present when one variable tends to decrease when the other increases. As one variable goes up, the other one tends to go down. An association is linear when the relationship between the two variables is approximately a straight line, whereas a nonlinear association is present when the two variables form some sort of curve. And it is possible that no clear association is present in your data set. Let's consider a scatter plot of bill length versus body mass. Once again, we construct a ggplot using the penguins data frame. We use geom underscore point to indicate that we want to create a scatter plot. We're going to map body underscore mass underscore g to the x aesthetic and bill underscore length underscore mm to the y aesthetic. So body mass is going to be the x variable in our plot and bill length is going to be the y variable. When we run this sequence of commands in the R console, this is the plot produced by ggplot2. Overall, we can see a positive association between body mass and bill length. As body mass increases, bill length also tends to increase. I'd actually say this, that this is a pretty linear association, though there are some points up here that somewhat break up the pattern. So as data scientists, we ask ourselves why these points deviate from the overall linear pattern. It could be that the data are noisy, which simply means that the patterns aren't as strong and clear as we would like. Data don't always behave the way we want them to. It could be that there is a third variable that's not accounted for in our plot, but, ha but that has a relationship with the other two variables. When we are not accounting for this variable, it is called a lurking variable. It sort of lurks in the background. When we do account for a lurking variable in our analysis, it becomes something known as a confounding variable. And I want to note that I'm defining lurking and confounding variables somewhat loosely and in a general sense, and not with statistical rigor. If you look up these definitions elsewhere, you might find something slightly different. But overall, the idea is that there's a third variable that we can either include in our analysis or not include our analysis. But our hope is that we can find it and include that variable in our analysis to better interpret our data. Let's see if we can use a third variable to better understand the patterns we're seeing in this graphic. Specifically, let's consider a scatter plot of bill length versus body mass that makes a distinction between the different species of penguin we're observing. I use code similar to before, but I now specify the color aesthetic, mapping the species variable to the color aesthetic. When I do this, this will automatically color the points of the different species with unique colors. In the graphic produced, I can see that the Adeli penguins are down in the lower left-hand corner here, the Gen 2 penguins are up in the are in the mid upper right corner, while the, while the chinstrap penguins are shown in the top left corner, and there's clear patterns between them. The Adelie penguins tend to have smaller body mass and bill length, while the chinstrap penguins penguins tend to have smaller body mass than the Gen 2 penguins, but similar bill lengths. The Gen 2 penguins seem to have the largest body mass and bill length of all the penguin species we are considering. As previously mentioned, we want our plots to be as clear and, in, and as interpretable as possible. For individuals who have struggles distinguishing between colors, it might be helpful to use different shapes to distinguish the different penguin species. To do that, I'm going to specify another aesthetic in my plot. Specifically, in addition to mapping species to the color aesthetic, I'm also going to map species to the shape aesthetic. When I do that, I not only get colors that distinguish between the three different kinds of species, I get different symbols as well. So I can see the Adelie penguins are shown with the red circles. The Gen 2 penguins are shown with the blue squares. The Chinstrap penguins are shown with the green triangles. And once again, because this is automatically done using scaling in ggplot2, the legend clearly indicates the shape and color of each penguin species shown in the graphic.